Hello everybody and welcome to part three of State of the Collection. Gosh, these first two videos have been like 20 minutes long. Good Lord, I need a uh, Foster's oil can. I'll probably be getting that in just a minute. Uh, all right, next watch up, Laurier Falcon, PVD Gold. I love this watch. I think it looks fantastic. I always wanted a gold watch, 36 millimeter. All in all, it comes in this cool little travel case. All in all, I really, really enjoy this watch. So there's some watches in these watch rolls. This is what Laurier watches used to come in. These watch rolls here. I have no idea what is in these watch rolls. Uh, oh, it's an SKX. Okay, the SKX 011. The third or the fourth SKX that's in the collection currently. Uh, you know, take it or leave it. The orange dial isn't really that orange. It's more of like an off color orange. I did mod this with the, uh, an orange uh, aluminum insert there, but yeah, SKX, I've already said, it's fantastic. What do we have in here? I'm smelling vintage. Let's see. Oh yes, okay. Gruen Precision. Yes, it's a the Gruen that I found also at a uh, flea market there. It still runs, a little wobbly in the case, but it still runs. Uh, I really, really think this watch is super cool. Started to, something's turning green in there. I don't know what that is. I guess it's a chemical reaction or something. I guess so, to the the strap there. The strap is having a chemical reaction. But anyway, grew in precision from the 1960s. And then a very cool hand wind Timex. I forget the name of this watch, but uh, I wind these up from time to time just to make sure they uh, continue to work. Some of them take uh, quite a while to wind up, but then they eventually get going. Oh, hopefully, come on, come on, start up. There we go. Oh, no, it didn't. Give it a tap. Yeah, sometimes they just need a little tap to get going, you know. But uh, yeah, vintage watches, if you can get them for cheap, that's cool because they probably really won't last if you don't take care of them or interact with them. But uh, yeah, I love this watch. I think there's something in this San Martin travel case here. I'm not sure what it is. Let's see. Oh, yes. Oh, if you're a James Bond fan, you might know what this is. I have not done a review of this. I've actually been looking for this, so I'm glad so I can wear it. Uh, this is the Seiko Quartz S3. This is the watch that Roger Moore wore in a view to a kill uh, in the horse scenes. And then, of course, I guess in stills, you see he's wearing a... Um, Rolex date just but this is what he was wearing when he wasn't wearing the date just so kind of cool movie history I got this for I think $25 the guy said it didn't run I put a battery in nothing happened I threw it in the glove box of my car and then uh, came back the next day and it was running so I have no idea what the deal was with that and it's been running ever since and then we have this Seamaster homage this thing's a piece of crap do not buy this this was I think it I don't want to quote the company. I believe it's a... I don't want to say the company. I don't remember who made this. I just got it off of eBay, but it is terrible. It's ugly, the colors are all off, and it's a piece of crap. And in this Invicta box, we have another uh, watch that I assembled. Uh, pretty much the same dial on all of these, but uh, yeah, I just love that blue color. Uh, hadn't featured these on the channel at all, but uh, yeah, again, not selling these, not selling them, just making them for my own enjoyment, and uh, they will never leave the collection. Then you've got this crap watch from Hanmin, the Hanmin POS. As you see, the bezel uh, has already fallen off. Yeah, not interested. Piece of crap. And then we have a G-Shock. I like this watch. This is a G-Shock, I forget the reference. Cool yellow color. I was working out with this one for, for a while, but then I decided to switch to something else. But yeah, cool, cool watch. Extremely light, extremely durable. I love it. And the battery has died in the old Casio calculator watch. I uh, got this watch because we were doing a Back to the Future parody for something, and I, I had someone wear it, but the battery has since died, even though the 5 never worked on it. But uh, I would wear this from time to time. I need to get a new battery. Cool, cool retro-style watch. Man, these videos are taking forever. I don't know if this is everything in the collection. Uh, there's stuff all over the place. I know the... Uh, the um, uh, 
Steel Dive 1970 is not here. That's on loan to somebody. Uh, but the rest of them, I, don't, I have no idea. That, there's some upstairs, downstairs. I don't know. This is as close as I can get it. But uh, this, again, another homage that I did. Um, tried to uh, make the dial look vintage. Uh, succeeded somewhat. Uh, but, yeah, cool, cool color green there. Again, I already showed that one. And then you have the Hamilton the Hamilton Khaki Feel Automatic, love this watch. Have it on an Uncle Seiko uh, bracelet uh, that was made for the Speedmaster. It doesn't fit exactly right, but I think it looks fantastic. And the San Martin 62 Moss Homage. I know there's better 62 Moss homages out there currently that are a bit more true to the actual size, but this was the first one I got. Mineral crystal, ceramic bezel. I still enjoy it. And the Hamilton Khaki Field Automatic. What can I say? What can you say about this watch that hasn't already been said? It's fantastic. Got it on an elastic style strap here. Just really, really, really great watch. Then I have the white dial version as well because Bark and Jack uh, influenced me too much. He made that look too good when he was out in the uh, Scottish Highlands or whatever he was doing where he's in the snow. I thought it looked really cool, so I got it. And uh, the bracelet I got from the Swatch group uh, separately, so you can do that. Hamilton Khaki King, fantastic everyday watch. I wear this watch when I don't want to be distracted by looking at a watch to be rude to people, if that makes sense. This one just kind of blends into the background for me. Great everyday watch. I don't find myself staring at it all the time, so that's why I wear it uh, when I shouldn't be looking at a watch. One of my favorite watches in my collection, if not my favorite watch, just be delicate there, getting the dust off. The Laurier Neptune Generation 3. This is a fantastic watch. This is everything that I really want in a watch. Fantastic bracelet, uh, you know, great movement. Uh, it looks fantastic. Yeah, maybe I could have got the gilt one. Maybe I should have gone for that. But I was a little skittish because I wanted to make sure the watch worked uh, with everything there. But uh, yeah, I just adore, adore, adore this watch. And one that I unboxed last week or whatever week this is. I don't know. We're probably four months into this uh, state of the collection. The Sea Stern uh, homage there. Um, I'm going to do a review of this coming up. I don't want to say too much. I got some problems with it. I got some problems with it, but uh, yeah. And my go-to workout watch. This is the Seiko Arnie. I love this watch. Oh no. Oh no. The seal. Oh no. Look at that. I just wore this today when I worked out. I wonder what happened there. So the rubber seal is breaking. Oh, that is not good. Seiko. What are you doing? Let me see. Let me see if I can fiddle with that. Yeah, the rubber seal. Rubber seal broke? Wow. That is not good. It just kind of deteriorated there. Okay, well, Seiko Arnie owners, be aware of that. Uh, wow. Okay. But you know that I do use this all the time, so you can see it's kind of gross there. But Wow. Disappointing, the seal just messed up there. And then I have the SKX-013, uh, which is a watch that I adore. I probably, this is my favorite SKX. I have it on an Uncle Seiko bracelet, again, made for the Speedmaster, so I guarantee you've never seen that on a Seiko SKX. Um, and I actually uh, put it on backwards, apparently. Wow, that's unfortunate. Hmm, let me take a look at that. Uh, another build. I did not build this. This was uh, someone uh, on eBay that built it. Looks fantastic. Again, you know, questionable whether they should even be built, but uh, they sure do look pretty cool. And then another legend, the Omega Seamaster 300M. Uh, mine is janked up, as all of y'all know, but I do love this watch. I love wearing it. Um, really cool. Uh, from 1999, the James Bond watch. Really enjoy it. Pretty cool. And then an Islander. Another Islander from LongIslandWatch.com. Yellow dial, SKX homage there. I do like this. It's more of a Simpsons yellow if you catch my drift there. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. I have it on a... Oh gosh, what is this company called? Crafter Blue. Uh, blue rubber strap there. I kind of like to wear it on that. So I want to take this one to the beach at some point.
Another homage, homaging the Omega Propoloff. Uh, this is the Steel Dive watch. Steel Dive 1969, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember, but uh, yeah. Cool watch, way too big. I have it on a strap code uh, shark mesh bracelet, which is really cool because it's tapered. You don't really have that on a lot of shark mesh bracelets, but uh, yeah, still the residue of the Arnie uh, seal there. That's not good. Uh, but yeah, you know, it is what it is. Recent acquisition, the Vostok, forget the reference number, beautiful yellow dial. I will have a review of this coming up very soon. And then you have the uh, Casio DW5600, yes, that I modded into a metal G-Shock. So you can get kits of these off eBay and, uh, you know, do things like that. Uh, loved it uh, in its resin case, but really love it in this uh, stainless steel, without a doubt. NTH Nacken, what can you say about that? Super cool watch, uh, really cool, very thin for a dive watch, drilled lugs. Since the review, I've added the Beads of Rice bracelet, which if you have an NTH Nacken, stop what you're doing right now, go buy this bracelet. This is the most comfortable bracelet probably I've ever had. Um, it is fantastic, great clasp. Um, it just adds so much to the watch, you know, so if you're bored with your, uh, your knack in there, get one of these or you just buy it originally on these because the other bracelet's okay, but this one is where it's at. Another watch, this is one of my favorites, probably in the top five, definitely. The Bulova Oceanographer. That green dial is crazy cool. This is crazy 70s. It's so cool. The bracelet is very comfortable. It's a wonderful watch. It's not an everyday watch because of the, you know, the coloring will make it stand out a little bit, but it's a fun summer watch. And if you can get one of these, I, I haven't looked at the other colored dials, but I feel like this one is the one that you want to get if you're going to get one. And then again, have not done a review of this. This is the most beautiful Bulova. Bulova. And I even said it wrong, Bulova. Vostok, this is the most beautiful Vostok amphibia I have ever seen. It is a fully loomed dial. I will do a review of it. Uh, the indices and the hour markers are all gunmetal style. Uh, great bezel, uh, you know, super cool. I have it on a strap code uh, rivet style bracelet with a strap code uh, Probably, for my money, the best clasp that they've ever made. Uh, ratcheting clasp. So, really cool there. But, uh, yeah, saving it for the review. Again, definitely need to get around to review in this one. This is the Hamilton Crosswind. Such a classy watch. It's been in a couple of movies. James Bond. It's been in uh, another movie. I forget, but uh, Liam Hensworth wore this watch uh, in a movie as a, in space doing something. So super cool watch. A little on the pricey side, but uh, for what you're getting, it is a Swiss movement. I think it's pretty dang cool, and I need to get around to doing the review. By the way, this is on a Strapco uh, leather bracelet made specifically for Hamilton watches. So pretty cheap. I think it was only like 30 bucks or something, but it's much better than the stock bracelet that comes on these. And the DW290, another workout watch that I enjoy working out with uh, frequently. It is ugly, but it is the Tom Cruise Mission Impossible watch. So, you know, you hear the theme going in your head when you're playing around with it, but uh, yeah, cool watch, very durable, had no issues with it so far. And two left because I can't I can't remember if there's anything else anywhere, but I'm sure if someone's keeping count, I'm kind of curious to what the count is. Uh, the Laurier Gemini, an absolutely fantastic watch. Uh, the same bracelet that's on other Laurier's, um, you know, column wheel chronograph. It's the ST1901 movement. Um, really just beautiful, well-made, vintage style. Uh, you get a uh, acrylic crystal or plexiglass crystal, so it's going to give you that warmth that you, you have on vintage style watches. I love this watch. I adore it. And finally, the legend. This is probably, it's not the biggest legend, but for me, it's a fantastic watch. It's the Seiko Flightmaster. Yes, the Seiko Flightmaster. Everyone needs one of these. You can still get them 
for under $300. Um, I have it on an Uncle Seiko bracelet. The end link is the, uh, the OEM end link for the Seiko Flightmaster. And then I sort of popped it out and pushed this one in. It doesn't fit exactly right, but uh, I'm trying to get Uncle Seiko to make a bracelet for this watch. So if you got an in with Uncle Seiko, please let him know because I think this looks fantastic like this. I mean, it really, really does. And we are sorely needing an aftermarket bracelet that's awesome for the Flightmaster. So it's very hard. 21 mil lugs and the, the lugs are so close or the, the spring bar is so close to the case. So I know it's hard to do, but... Uh, Somebody out there can do it. I know it. So, guys, <clears throat> I am losing my voice. This was all recorded at one time. It's been an hour and a half, I believe, that I've been talking straight. Um, that's the collection to the best of my knowledge. So, I do feel like Mr. Smith goes to Washington. I've got to pack all these things back up. Oy. I've got a long journey ahead, but I hope you enjoyed the state of the collection. A lot of stuff I probably shouldn't have in there. Uh, still, I should probably, uh, you know, start selling some stuff. But uh, yeah, again, like I said, every watch reviewed on the channel is still in the collection. So that is all I have time for today, guys. And I will see you when I see you. <laughs>